Prepare to be amazed, because Earth is currently in the midst of a significant extinction event, and guess who's behind it? Yep, us humans. Shocking, right? More than one in five species on our planet is on the brink of extinction, and if we don't take action, that number could skyrocket to 50% by the end of the century. But here's the twist, extinction might not be as final as it seems. Thanks to the marvels of science, we could potentially rewind the clock and resurrect some long-lost species. So, without further delay, let's delve into the fascinating world of extinct animals that might just make a comeback. Upbeat music. Picture this. Colossal tusks, a winter coat that's as furry as it gets, and a whopping six-ton weight. You're thinking woolly mammoths, right? Well, we haven't laid eyes on these majestic giants, but here's the scoop. Initially believed to have vanished during the last ice age, recent findings suggest that a final group of 500 to 1,000 woolly mammoths survived on Wrangell Island in the Arctic Ocean just 4,000 years ago. While today's elephants roam African savannas and Asian jungles, woolly mammoths once thrived in the tundra, spanning northern Asia, much of Europe, and the northern part of North America. With their smaller ears, shorter tails, and extra thick coats, they were perfectly adapted to the chilly conditions. In fact, they played a vital role in maintaining the environment, earning the nickname Mammoth Step. Climate change and alterations in their food supply likely contributed to their demise, and of course, pesky humans and their overhunting habits might have played a part too. But hold on, could we witness the resurgence of the woolly mammoth? It's not as far-fetched as you might think. Several well-preserved specimens have been uncovered in Siberian permafrost, serving as potential keys to bringing back this long-lost species. It may sound like science fiction, but scientists are optimistic about a concept called de-extinction. Before we delve deeper, just hit those like and subscribe buttons and ring that little bell icon to stay in the loop. Now, back to the excitement. The prospect of resurrecting extinct species through de-extinction has become increasingly plausible, thanks to advancements in selective breeding, genetics, and reproductive cloning. In the latter part of the 20th century, tools emerged that enabled scientists to isolate and analyze DNA from bones, hair, and other tissues of deceased animals, including frozen mammoths. At the forefront of these breakthroughs is the CRISPR-Cas9 gene modification tool, a super sciencey cut and paste mechanism that isolates specific mammoth traits for integration into another animal's DNA. This could be a game changer for bringing back the woolly mammoth, especially since its closest living relative, the Asian elephant, is still around. Once the genes from the extinct species are successfully integrated into the living one, the resulting hybrid genome could be placed into a surrogate or grown ex vitro, outside the mother, using an artificial womb. This method doesn't yield genetically identical replicas of extinct animals, instead, it produces modern versions engineered to resemble and behave like their extinct counterparts. So, imagine a mammophant, well suited for the far north with shorter ears and a dense hairy coat, though not an exact replica of the bona fide woolly mammoth. But why should we resurrect the woolly mammoth in the first place? Well, there could be significant environmental advantages. According to George Church, the researcher leading the Harvard Woolly Mammoth Revival Team, reintroducing these giants could help transform the Arctic tundra back into the grasslands that existed during the last ice age. Mammoths and other large herbivores played a crucial role in maintaining ancient Arctic ecosystems by trampling down trees and dispersing grass seeds in their dung. However, their disappearance led to the transformation of the ecosystem into the mossy tundra and taiga we see today, accompanied by permafrost that's slowly releasing harmful carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Russian geophysicist Sergei Zimov has already demonstrated through extensive research that reintroducing grazing animals can convert tundra back into grasslands. With a herd of mammoths involved in such a restoration project, the outcomes could be truly remarkable. But how close are we to witnessing the return of the woolly mammoth? In 2017, 
Church suggested we might see live woolly mammoths in a couple of years, while Dr. Tom Ellis, leading research in synthetic biology and genome engineering at Imperial College London, believes it could take at least 10 years. However, advancements are happening every year. In 2019, Japanese scientists achieved a breakthrough when cells recovered from a 28,000-year-old preserved mammoth exhibited signs of life. At this point, it feels more like a matter of when, not if, we'll witness these giants walking among us again. All this chatter about de-extinction might be thrilling, but don't expect us to recreate Jurassic Park anytime soon. The current revival methods mostly hinge on analyzing DNA from well-preserved specimens, which unfortunately doesn't apply to dinosaurs. The extreme age of dinosaur specimens and the degradation of DNA over time make it a distant possibility. Instead, our best bet lies in reviving more recently extinct species, like the thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger. This creature, resembling a large, sandy-colored predator with distinctive dark stripes along its back, possessed the head of a wolf and a long, stiff tail. Indigenous to the Australian mainland, Tasmania, and New Guinea, the thylacine vanished from mainland Australia around 3,000 years ago. Its presence lingered on the southern island of Tasmania until the 20th century. Unfortunately, being a keystone predator led to accusations of sheep killing, prompting government-sponsored bounties that ultimately eradicated the species. The last known thylacine, a male, met its end at Australia's Hobart Zoo on September 7, 1939, reportedly due to neglect during extreme Tasmanian weather. But hold on, there might be a chance for a comeback. About 750 thylacine specimens in museums offer little viable DNA, except for 13 young ones preserved in ethanol. In 2017, it was revealed that one of these babies, housed in the Melbourne Museum, provided enough high-quality genetic material for scientists to sequence the entire genome. For the non-science savvy, a genome is essentially an organism's complete set of genetic instructions, offering the blueprint for resurrection. Cloning, once considered science fiction, has proven viable. In the 1990s, somatic cell nuclear transfer, SCNTIF, produced Dolly the sheep, the first mammalian clone. To clone an extinct animal, scientists would extract the nucleus from a preserved cell, swap it into an egg cell from the animal's closest living relative, and implant the egg into a surrogate host. While cloning long extinct animals like the woolly mammoth might be a stretch, it could be a real possibility for creatures like the thylacine. Despite the challenges, scientists like Mike Archer and Andrew Pask have made significant strides in cloning embryos of extinct species and making genetic material function inside living organisms. While bringing back the thylacine is more complicated due to the lack of an equivalent species, recent advancements suggest that what once seemed ludicrous is becoming increasingly plausible. So, when it comes to resurrecting the thylacine, never say never. Now, what are your thoughts on this whole de-extinction concept? Is it a brilliant idea or a moral minefield? I'm genuinely interested, so drop your comments below and let's get a discussion going. Say goodbye to the dodo, a phrase often uttered with regret as yet another species is added to the ever-expanding list of recent extinctions. The dodo bird, a flightless species weighing around 50 pounds, with a less than impressive appearance, has become the poster child for extinction due to its rapid decline in somewhat eccentric nature. Living on the island of Mauritius, this bird met its demise in the late 1600s when invasive species outcompete it for food and preyed on its young. Less than 75 years after sailors first encountered it, the dodo was completely wiped out. But, as we've come to understand, extinction isn't always permanent. Revive and Restore, an organization dedicated to the genetic rescue of endangered and extinct species, has entertained the idea of dodo de-extinction. While the possibility seemed feasible given the progress in restoring creatures like the woolly mammoth, there was a significant hurdle, 
finding dodo DNA proved extremely challenging. The remains of the dodo are scattered, with a head and foot at Oxford, a foot in the British Museum, a head in Copenhagen, and more or less complete skeletons in various museums worldwide. A breakthrough came in 2016 when Beth Shapiro, an evolutionary biologist at the University of California, announced the successful sequencing of the entire genome of the extinct dodo bird using the genome of the Nicobar pigeon as a template. Mauritius, now home to incredible recovery projects for endangered species, presents an opportunity for the dodo's potential return. Intensive management and predator-free satellite islands protect endemic species from invasive threats. Controlling invasive mammals could create conditions for the dodo's survival, with scientists exploring genetic engineering approaches like using sex-biasing genes to breed mammals out of existence. While speculative, the return of the dodo seems closer than ever. Now, let's shift our focus from one flightless bird to another, the moa. A group of enormous birds, some reaching 12 feet tall and weighing up to 510 pounds, the moa faced extinction in the late 1600s due to hunting by the Maori people and other environmental impacts. Fast forward over 700 years, and hope emerges for these colossal birds. Harvard University scientists have reconstructed the first nearly complete genome for an extinct moa species, the little bush moa, standing more than 4.3 feet tall and weighing approximately 66 pounds. The DNA, extracted from a toe bone of a museum specimen in 2018, opens new possibilities for resurrecting these birds. Led by Harvard's Allison Cloutier, the team used high-throughput sequencing techniques to sequence hundreds of thousands of DNA strands simultaneously. A sister study revealed that moas are most closely related to living birds like kiwis, emus, and cassowaries, offering exciting prospects for the future. Bringing the moa back to life requires a bit more genetic tinkering with the DNA extracted from the museum specimen and an egg from a living species suitable for genome implantation. Luckily, emus lay 6-inch long, 1-pound eggs that could potentially serve this purpose. However, the challenge lies in bird genetics, as cloning techniques used in mammals, like the one that created Dolly the sheep, don't currently work in birds. One potential workaround, successful in chickens, involves introducing the reconstructed genome into embryo cells that later develop into eggs or sperm in wild birds. While the moa may not be making a comeback just yet, it's safe to say we shouldn't count them out entirely. Now, let's journey into the realm of mythical creatures that once roamed the earth, the Siberian unicorn. Far from the graceful creatures of folklore, this beast, weighing a mighty four tons, resembled a giant, hairy rhinoceros with an enormous horn on its nose. Fragmented bones of the Siberian unicorn have posed challenges for analysis, but in 2018, DNA analysis successfully shed light on this mysterious giant. Contrary to the belief that it became extinct between 200,000 and 100,000 years ago, radiocarbon dating revealed that the Siberian unicorn survived in Eastern Europe and Central Asia until as recently as 36,000 years ago, coexisting with early modern humans. Surprisingly, human activities likely had little to do with their extinction, instead, the Siberian unicorn's demise might be attributed to its selective eating habits. As a prehistoric lawnmower, it grazed on tough, dry grasses and failed to adapt when other grass eaters switched to a more varied diet during climate change. DNA analysis unveiled that the Siberian unicorn was a unique lineage, diverging from the line that led to modern rhinos over 40 million years ago. Understanding their extinction may offer insights into preserving the remaining rhino species on Earth. While complete Siberian unicorn specimens have never been recovered, the part of the skull where the horn would have grown suggests it might have been up to one meter in length. Now, let's shift our focus to another potential candidate for de-extinction, the passenger pigeon. Now, let's delve into the world of the passenger pigeon, 
a small gray bird with a pinkish-red breast that once thrived in North America but vanished around 1900. Unlike today's pigeons, often considered pests, passenger pigeons played a crucial role in shaping the forests they inhabited. With an estimated population of nearly 5 billion at the start of the 19th century, their overwhelming numbers and prolific droppings led to the destruction of trees and increased forest fires. Surprisingly, their extinction brought an end to these natural disturbances, impacting white oaks, which lost their primary seed dispersal method. Ecologist Ben Novak, leading the Passenger Pigeon Project at Revive and Restore, aims to resurrect this species using its closest living relative, the band-tailed pigeon. Although determining the necessary gene swaps is complex, Novak is optimistic, projecting the first generation of passenger pigeons by 2022 to 2025 if sufficient funding is secured. Now, let's turn our attention to the saber-toothed tiger, a fearsome predator with elongated teeth that roamed North and South America during the Pleistocene epoch. These large cats, reaching around 5 feet in length and weighing up to 620 pounds, faced extinction approximately 10,000 years ago due to a combination of environmental changes, prey decline, and human intervention. Despite their impressive size and sharp teeth, saber-toothed tigers were likely hunted by early humans using projectile weapons. While skeletons and fossils offer insights into their physical characteristics, the possibility of resurrection hinges on finding well-preserved specimens in the Siberian permafrost. If successful, scientists could extract DNA and sequence the genome, exploring which living relative could act as a surrogate. The question of the benefits of bringing back these Ice Age predators remains, with de-extinction focusing more on ecological restoration than tourism. As we ponder the resurrection of these fascinating creatures, which extinct animal would you most like to see brought back? Share your thoughts. Thanks for watching.